the second new Lisa is Lisa 2 slash 5, which has a 5 megabyte profile Winchester disk drive for $4,495. And the third new Lisa is Lisa 2 slash 10. It has a built-in 10 megabyte Winchester disk drive which sits right above the floppy. And it's priced at $54.95. Now all of these new Lisas use the three and a half inch floppy disk drive that is compatible with Macintosh. And there is an upgrade for all existing Lisa owners to upgrade their Lisa 1 to a Lisa 2 slash 5 absolutely free. But perhaps the biggest news will be that all three new leases are 100% Macintosh software compatible. Now together, these four workstations form the foundation of the Apple 32 Super Micros, a family of compatible products based on Lisa technology and 32-bit architecture. And these four workstations span an incredible price performance range, with Macintosh as the key building block at $2,495 to Lisa 210, the flagship in performance, at $5,495. We didn't start Apple to build adequate products. And we didn't start Apple to simply put computers on the desks of computer-trained professionals to connect to IBM mainframes. What we wanted to do and what we want to do now is to build great personal computers and bring them to tens of millions of people. Never before has the time been riper, and never before with our radically easier-to-use family of 32-bit products have we been closer to doing just that. Thank you very much. I'd like to turn the meeting back over to Al Eisenstadt, who will give us a tally of the votes. Al? Thank you, Steve. Uh, before I get started with the tally, uh, I'd like to make an announcement. It's a little bit unfortunate, but there are people in the back of Flynn, in the front of Flynn Center who were not able to get into the auditorium. They arrived later. Uh, we had no admission cards, uh, and they were not able to get in. The fire laws are such that even though there, are, you may look around and say there are wide aisles here. We were, because of fire laws, we were not able to fill those areas. Let me say in this in, uh, in behalf of Apple. Last year, we had our meeting here, and there were between 1,900 and 2,000 people here. This auditorium holds approximately 2,600 people. That gave us about a one-third margin of safety. We felt that was adequate. Our proxy statements went out in plenty of time, uh, so the opportunity to vote was there. Uh, we have collected proxies on the outside, uh, so people had an opportunity to vote, even though they were denied admission here, which I truly regret. What, I'm go what we're going to do, and I'm making this announcement to all those here, as well as those who I believe my voice is being piped in outside, this entire uh, shareholders meeting has been videotaped. We are going to arrange in the next month, sometime in the next few weeks, to run that videotape in a large auditorium, perhaps here if it can be arranged, perhaps a movie theater, a hotel, somewhere in the area. We will run announcements in the newspapers of, uh, of this event and for those of you who may be outside of the area, please drop me a note at Apple, and I will make certain that you get an announcement of the time and place of that event. Furthermore, we will have John Scully and Steve Jobs present at that videotape in person, so that it, with respect to the question and answers and the opportunity to meet them, 
uh, the President and, and Chief Executive Officer, as well as the Chairman of the Board, and perhaps other members of the Executive Staff, will be in attendance, so you will have an opportunity to talk directly to them. I'm truly sorry for this. It, uh, it certainly is not what we planned on, and it's, uh, it's unfortunate. Once again, my really heartfelt apologies. The inspectors of elections have completed their tally of the votes cast by the shareholders at this meeting. The results of the voting are, are as follows. Of the total number of shares eligible to vote at this meeting, which was 59,378,283 shares, 45,595,582 shares were actually voted. With respect to the three measures on the ballot, First, with the respect to the election of directors, 4.7% of the shares eligible were withheld for the vote of directors, and therefore the lowest vote was 95.3% in favor of the, vote of the election of the seven directors. No director received less than 95.3% of the shares cast. With respect to the men, amendment of the 1981 stock option plan, 76.1% of the shares cast were voted in favor of the amendment of the 1981 plan, 9.4% of the shares voted against it, and 14.5% of the shares cast abstained. Finally, with respect to the ratification of Arthur Young as the independent accountants for uh, the 1984 fiscal year, 94.9% .9 of the shares cast, uh, I'm sorry, of the eligible share, of the shares cast voted in favor of uh, the ratification of AY. 4.5% of the shares voted against, and 0.6 voted abstained from the vote. I'd like to thank all of the shareholders present here, as well as those whose participation was solely by proxy. And with that, bring the formal part of the meeting to an end. Do I hear a motion to adjourn the 1983 annual meeting of shareholders of Apple Computer? Do I hear a second? All in favor say aye. All opposed? The meeting is hereby adjourned. As Steve Jobs mentioned earlier, we've set aside some time from questions from those present here today. So I would like to ask John Scully and Steve Jobs to come out. If there are any questions in the audience now, Steve and I will try to answer that. And I will also announce that uh, following the end of this uh, question and answer period. Our exec staff, who I introduced earlier, are available uh, to answer other questions. So are there any questions from the audience? Yes, sir. What are the prices on the peripherals that you're now uh, When you buy an image writer printer, uh, normally it's $595. But if you buy it with a Macintosh as a special introductory offer, it's $495, which means for $2,990, you get a Macintosh, an image writer printer, and we're also throwing in the word processing and illustration software for a limited time only. So you get a pretty complete package. Uh, the modem, there are two versions. One is a 300 bit per second, and another is a 300, 1200 bit per second, and they range in price from, I believe, uh, 200 to $500. And uh, I, the rest of the things, I, we could probably get you a price list after the meeting. Repeat your question, please. Excuse me. That first question was, what was the price list for for the prices for the peripherals and accessories for Macintosh. Any other questions? Yes, sir, back there. What about availability for the Macintosh? If you went out now and wanted to buy one, you could buy one, but you better hurry. <laughs> <laughs>